Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where we learn to be a better programmer. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how I learned how to code. But before we get started, be sure to hit subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. So my coding journey started when I, uh, <laughs> so my coding journey started in undergrad. Uh, I was a uh, aerospace engineering major. Um, so, and I took a, my freshman year, I took a uh, aerospace computing class. And I'm not afraid to tell you that I legitimately failed that class, like an F uh, on my transcript. Um, luckily, M University of Maryland has this thing called freshman forgiveness. So I was able to retake that class and I did marginally better. Um, and then I was able to finish and graduate. Okay. So my history with writing software didn't start off that well, right? So I, I definitely failed my first attempt. Uh, but I kept at it. So, um, but my senior year, I like mobile apps were becoming huge. Um, I know that that kind of dates me, but so mobile apps were becoming this like crazy thing. Everybody started to have a smartphone and like, you know, I wanted to get in on this. And I wanted to learn how to do it. Right. So I first started like trying to watch YouTube videos and, uh, you know, wanted to develop an app in Android or iOS. I had an iOS phone at the time. I have Android now, but um, and I just was like, there, there's too much here. I don't know. I, I kind of gave up initially. And then I, I ended up having an app idea that I paid a company to develop for me. And in hindsight, like being a software engineer today is like, dang, I could have just written that myself. You know, obviously I couldn't at the time, but the, the fastest opportunity to get my app developed was to, uh, work with, um, uh, pay a company to do it. Um, so that work that, that happened and the, the app idea failed. Um, and then I was like, all right, I, I have the capacity to learn this. I graduated. I started a job, uh, at a great, uh, uh, aerospace engineering company and they ended up wanting to, they, they had a great program for continuing education that would pay a certain amount of money to have you go back and get a master's degree. So it was between like a part-time MBA or a part-time master's in computer science. So I decided to get a part-time master's in computer science because I was like, oh, well, if I get that, well, maybe I can learn how to make an app. And like, I don't know, like app development is always something that was super, super interesting to me. So I was like, all right, let's get this master's in computer science. So I get, I, I apply, I get into the school and then going, working full time and then also doing part-time masters. So it took me two full, two and a half years, I think, to finish. Um, but let me just say that, uh, it took two and a half years of staying up basically six hours, like, or basically staying up until like 2 AM every morning and then waking up at six, six thirty to go to work. Um, so it, it's not for the faint of heart for sure, but, uh, it's definitely a great way for, it, it was a definitely a great way for me to get into the software world. Um, because I found that like YouTube tutorials at the time, were kind of inadequate in terms of uh, explaining things to me, and I didn't have the ability to, or I didn't have the, I didn't have the discipline to study something every day and watch YouTube videos every day and learn something new every day and you know create a learning plan for myself. Some people are very, very good at that, but for me, I needed the structure of a master's in computer science. So, um, so I focused in you know Java. Uh, I wanted to focus in Java enterprise web development. I didn't have any history in Java. That computing class that I told you that I failed, that was uh, C++ in like MATLAB. Uh, so I figured, well, why don't I try to learn something new in, in, in Java? So um, so yeah, learning Java was pretty interesting at first. Um, like I remember sitting down, I was like, all right, I'm starting my degree program, but let me see if I can just like write some code. And I just remember getting so frustrated. Like I couldn't get my code to compile. I didn't know what the error messages look like. I didn't know how to read a stack trace. I didn't know, you know, what I didn't know how to differentiate between a runtime and a compile time error. And like, these are all things that just like are so unfathomable to me now. Like, of course I know what the difference between a, a compiler error and a runtime error is. Right. But let me just say that I have been writing software at this point for, um, uh, with my master's degree and my uh, and my current jobs, I've been writing software for about five years at this point, right? So let me just say that 
from, I went from zero to software engineer uh, at a great tech company uh, in five years. Um, you have to put in the work, but it's definitely worth it. Um, so, so then I ended up great working at uh, a great company uh, on a great team. Um, you know, so, so let me let me just back up. So I actually so I, I finished my degree and then I got a new job uh, in working uh, writing software for at, at Intel. Um, and Intel is a great company. I, I met, met some great people there and they're amazing. Uh, I was doing some amazing work there. I got an opportunity to do some machine learning research and do a little bit of uh, deep learning stuff. Um, and then ultimately, um, my time there came to an end after about two years. And I was like, all right, I'm ready to move on to something new and try something new. Uh, and that brought me over to Twitter. Uh, and Twitter has been fantastic so far in my, uh, uh, early, my short time there so far. Um, great people, extremely smart people, uh, extremely helpful. Um, so I was doing more low level programming at Intel. I was working primarily in C++ and uh, Python for scripting and shell scripts and stuff like that. Um, and then I transferred over to Twitter and I'm back doing Java. Uh, we use, I use some Python for some things every now and then, and then uh, I might write some shell scripts for, to help me with my productivity. Um, so, you know, everyone's journey is very different. Um, some people, I, I know I have a bunch of friends who have made career switches from, uh, you know, their non-technical career to software engineering going through a boot camp. They've been wildly successful there. Um, some people have gone the traditional route of a master's program. Um, and I think... I think you have to understand for yourself what what path works for you, right? So if you know you need that structure of a program um, and you want a credential, uh, credentials definitely help in a lot of instances and in getting you interviews and getting you in the door, um, then I would go for a master's degree. If you're strapped for cash, um, if you want some want a quick ramp up time and you know quick uh, uh, deluge of software development knowledge. Uh, go to the boot camp. The boot camp is a very cost effective way and they often have, you know, you don't pay any tuition until uh, you get a job. Some of these boot camps do that. Um, I think those are great options. I've, I've worked with a few people that have been uh, uh, done boot camps and they've been extremely successful uh, at, at, at uh, the companies that I've worked for. Um, and then if you're just someone who is, you know, very uh, driven and motivated and you want to just learn off of YouTube, do that as well. It might be harder to sell yourself as a, uh, a software engineer. Uh, you have to create a great portfolio. You have to try new things all the time and not limit yourself to just one language or one framework or do something like that. So it, it's, it's, there's different, there's always a path for someone depending on who you are. Um, and I've seen success in all three paths. Okay. So there's no one path that works for everyone, but if, if you're watching this video, that means you're trying, trying to figure out what the best path is for you. So I hope my story gave you some encouragement, like you will fail, um, but failing is how we learn, right? So you fail, you try, you fail, you try, you fail, you try, and, and over and over and over and over and over and over. If, you, if you're not failing, you're not growing, right? So don't be afraid of failure, expect it, fail, and you're like, okay, what did I learn from that? And then try again. Okay, so just just realize that you will fail and you will continue to fail, but that doesn't mean you're not meant to do something. All right. So um, so with that, uh, I hope you really enjoyed the video. I hope I gave some great insights for you that will help you make a decision on your path to software engineering or software development. And um, if you like the video, please give a like or uh, and, and subscribe and uh, turn on post notifications. Um, I'll be dropping more videos about how you can become an effective software engineer at a company, um, what what things uh, I've learned in my short time being a software engineer that have made me successful. Um, so yeah, thanks so much. All right.